Imagine a library where the pages aren't paper, but scales, fins, and skeletons. This isn't science fiction. It's what biological collections really are. Biological collections are one of the most important tools scientists have to understand life on our planet. Each preserved specimen is a time capsule. It documents biodiversity through history, reveals where species lived, and even records how environments have changed. Without them, we would struggle to track extinctions or study how ecosystems evolve. Since 1944, the Marine Vertebrate Collection at Scripps has been cared for by generations of curators. What began modestly has become one of the world's great repositories of marine fish diversity. Nearly two million specimens, representing more than 5,900 species. From skeletons to otoliths to DNA samples, each adds a page to an encyclopedia of life beneath the sea. This treasure trove fuels research in taxonomy, evolution, and ecology. It helps scientists uncover new species, trace evolutionary lineages, and understand how marine life adapts to changing oceans. But maintaining a collection like this is no small feat. Without fresh alcohol, jars dry out. Without funding, labels fade. Hmm. Even the best collections face an invisible countdown. Across the ocean, in Puerto Rico, the ichthyology collection at the University of Puerto Rico Mayaguez tells a very different story. Its roots stretch back nearly a century. The earliest specimens were gathered in the 1930s by naturalist Stuart Danforth. In the 1950s, Donald Erdman cataloged the first 1,200 lots, giving shape to the collection. In the 1960s, the legendary ichthyologist Jack Randall expanded it further. Later, from the 1980s through the 2000s, Danny Hensley oversaw a period of growth and discovery. For decades, the collection thrived, eventually holding over 13,000 specimens and 805 species, including rare paratypes, the precious reference samples that anchor new species names. But over time, curators left, resources dwindled, and the collection began to fade. Jars dried, labels dissolved, priceless samples deteriorated. Then came Hurricane Maria, pushing the collection to the brink of collapse. Imagine opening a cabinet and finding irreplaceable pieces of biodiversity collected over half a century, crumbling into dust. Decades of work potentially lost forever. That's when a group of scientists decided to fight back. Led by Diana Arcila and Ricardo Betancourt, with the help of students and funding from the National Science Foundation, they launched a rescue mission. Step by step, specimens were stabilized, jars refilled, and records digitized. In 2022, the entire collection, more than 13,000 samples, was packed and shipped by vessel from Puerto Rico to California not as lyrics of the past, but as survivors. Now, thanks to curator Diana Arcila, collection manager Ben Frabel, and their team of students, these treasures live on. Not hidden away, but open to the world. Once nearly inaccessible, their records are now freely available to the global scientific community. Already, they've yielded discoveries from lost type specimens the scientific equivalent of finding a Van Gogh painting, to new deep sea fish records from Puerto Rico. And likely, more discoveries await. Among the mysterious tripod fishes, dories, coffin fishes, and jelly noses still being studied. Even the jaw from the first documented shark attack in the Virgin Islands is now safely preserved. The rescue of Puerto Rico's fish collection is more than a success story. It's a reminder that science depends not only on discovery, but also on memory. Think of it this way. If species are the words of nature, then collections are its dictionary. Lose the dictionary, and you lose the ability to read the story of life. Every jar is a fragile but irreplaceable chapter of Earth's story. Every collection is a library of life. And when we protect these collections, we protect our ability to understand, cherish, and conserve the vast diversity of life that shares our planet.